In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You are advised that any view expressed by the host or their guest are not necessarily the views of the owners or management of Toginet Radio, Togi Entertainment, or the Owners Group, Inc. It's time for Motherhood Talk Radio, the most powerful voice in women's issues today, with Sandra Beck and Christy Holly. Ladies, Motherhood Talk Radio is here to give you a powerful platform by giving you interesting, inspiring, and influential information as you navigate everything from child care to corporate formation. Motherhood Talk Radio has interviews with best-selling authors, gurus of happiness, and women of interest who every single day make our world a better place for our families. Motherhood Talk Radio, powered by Motherhood Incorporated, is on the air now. Moms, this really is your show. Motherhood Talk Radio. And now, here are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Christy Holly. Hey, Mamas, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here today with Christy Holly and Doris Rivas Brecky. And I want to tell all the listeners that I was having a really bad day until Christy just tripped over the carpet in the lobby. <laughs> That was really funny. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't fall on my face to make you a little happier. Well, you know, <laughs> if you could do that, that would really help. Well, the day's not over. That's true. We still have a walk to do this week, and I could probably push you down, and that would that <laughs> would, would that make you feel better? <laughs> yes, yes, because we were just we were just watching this YouTube video, um, and it was on MSN, and you have to Google uh, guy gets hit by antelope on a mountain bike. <laughs> Oh, my God. It's a crowd pleaser. I mean, he's, like, going through the Serengeti on this mountain bike, and, you know, just out of nowhere, this antelope just charges him, <laughs> knocks him off the bike. And I don't know, Christy, I thought maybe I could do that to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, today's show is about chemistry and team building, and Christy, I think we have good chemistry. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we do, other than you wanting to, like, knock me off my bike while I'm riding. No, I just want to knock you down. I don't want to <laughs> knock you off your bike. Oh, that's, that's better. That's different. That's different. But, you know, when we talk about chemistry and team building, you know, which is today's topic, it's a really uh, elusive concept because it's like either, I don't know about you, Christy, but I either like somebody or I don't. And if I don't like you, just really probably really never going to like you. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I like to give people chances, but I also don't put everything out there. I can tell if with certain people, you know, if I can really trust them, I feel like I can do that right away. There are things, certain things that people say to me that I think like, oh, okay, like I can identify with her. I like her like you. Oh, you know, some of the things that you've said, you know, about, I don't know, just some gruesome, <laughs> gruesome things that you don't really usually say out loud, you think in your mind, and you think it's funny, and you say them, and I think, ah, that's my girl. Well, I, you know what? I really think, you know, some of the things we've bonded over over the years, I think when I said I want to make cupcakes full of peanuts and covered with cat hair for all the kids who have allergies, yes. come to my Halloween party, um, <laughs> yeah, you're either going to like me or not like me with that comment. Yes, I'll help you bake them. Yes. <laughs> that's why we're friends. I know. Well, and I think chemistry helps us get through a lot of difficult times. Times. Like, you know, when I was going through this terrible divorce and we're on the air and, you know, and I'm, I'm you know, spilling my guts and you're talking about fairy lights at your wedding, um, <laughs> I mean, we have to have chemistry to get through that. This is true. It is true. And chemistry is not something that I don't think you can, can manufacture it. I think it's there or it's not. It's like, yeah, you know, today when we were getting ready for the show, I'm like, hey, Rick, you know, do you have the team building and chemistry questions? And he's like, yes, but I'm not going to give them to you because you will lose them before the show. Yeah. Now, in many offices, head get your ass fired. <laughs> yeah, he, knew, he said he didn't want to have to look for them twice. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Richard well, D. Swanson. <laughs> nice. I know. Yeah. So that's what he said. Just saying. I just figured, you know, it's, it's hard for him because of that big chain he's wearing around his neck. I, I think it's cutting the blood flow off to his brain. 
I know, because he can hardly hardly hold his little head up. I know, I know. What is that about? I don't know. Well, all I know is that we have good chemistry in our team here on Motherhood Talk Radio, and uh, the team here is comprised of Sabrina and Carrie and Jill and John over at TogiNet. We've got Rick and Doris and Christy and Robin. It's actually a lot of people that have to come together to put this show together each week, so I think that we've done a really good job at team building, and since I'm the team leader, you must agree with me. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Yeah, sure. Whatever you say, Sam, you're in charge. Just yes. don't kick me off the air <laughs> or take away my fairy lights. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So we've got Doris here, and i got to tell you, with the team building thing, Doris is the newest member of our team. Did I list Tor- Doris in the in the group? I don't think I did. I'm yes, sorry. You did. You oh, did. good, good. I didn't want to be like the husband that gets the Academy Award and forgets <laughs> to thank his wife. No, I'm not going to thank you. Yeah, I'm not going to thank you either. Well, Doris gave me a script, and Christy, from a chemistry standpoint, how do I do well with, do I do well with scripts? Well, let's get to the point. Okay. No. 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 Okay. Um, That's okay. All right. So here's my line. I'm supposed to say this playfully and sarcastically Uh to Doris. Oh, no. Oh, Oh, wait. wait, That's me. Oh, okay. I don't see. I'm I'm lost. (laughs) Well, you didn't get the script, but I got the script. Rick did give me something. (gasps) Did you read it? Well, he just handed it to me. Okay. okay I'll All just... right, Doris, I'm reading my line here because we have a thespian coming on later on in the show. A what? Um, oh, don't even, you can't even spell it. Don't worry about it. I thespian. You, it's I not thought you a said lesbian. Ah, it's thought a you said thespian. <laughs> There's a difference. There's a big <laughs> fundamental difference. All right. Yeah, one's hot and one likes girls. So there you go. All right, well. Okay. Doris, so. Yes. Just the pause. <laughs> Uh, what did you find on your favorite world news channel, Doris? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> it's job. all good, Doris. This is, what did you job. learn, honey? I, well, from my favorite news channel, which on this particular topic has to be uh, ABC World News, I did happen to find a topic that has to do with teamwork. So I went, really? yeah, let's, wow. Yeah. So I said, oh, maybe Sandra will like this and she'll keep me on. So. It's all about pleasing me today. That's pretty much what it's about. That's <laughs> what I'm picking up, so I'm going to do my best. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, it has to do with uh, the healthcare industry, and I know that sounds boring. I mean, it's boring to me, too, but it's an issue, you know, that's coming up a lot. And in this particular story, it's talking about, the health care and em- uh, employees who are overweight at a company. <gasps> fat stuff. Christy, my favorite yes. topic. <laughs> I, know. Fat, 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 I knew, fat, I knew fat, that fat. was going okay. to be a big right. deal here. So anyway, right. uh, this particular, uh, yeah, this right. particular issue, <laughs> uh, what this company did was, and, th- and believe me, this does have something to do with teamwork. What this company did was they realized that uh, – they had these overweight people that were affecting the bottom line on their health care insurance rates. So what they did was they came up with this money incentive, in other words, a bribe, $10,000 to lose weight. This was Wow, $10,000 buys a lot of cheeseburgers. So if yeah, you lose yeah, weight. But, but, you know, I mean, that's what caught my ear was the $10,000. So anyway, it worked at this particular company. It did work. But the research shows that if you don't, uh, if you don't have teamwork involved, in other words, have other employees that keep motivating, you know, the employees that have lost the weight, that people will gain the weight back. So I think fat people are just going to be fat anyway. I mean, because you think about it, you go on diet after diet, people lose weight, they gain it back, they're like, oh, I didn't have the right motivation, I didn't live to to Dr. Phil. Look at Oprah, she gets fat on a regular basis. But but there are some (laughs) people that it does work, though, and and they found that if they had other employees that were involved, you know, that whole saying, it takes a village, that it it did work. Well, but what if the support system is like, Christy, let's go get some chips? I didn't say that. <laughs> I do. Rick does. He did. Well, he was the one that said to get the nitro, too, with the Fit to Strip Challenge. That's his fault. I don't blame oh, him. We just... I'll tell you a lot of bad <laughs> I know. Yeah, we just had a caller uh, come into the chat saying, hey, team, I'll lose weight for $10,000. There's a lot of things I do for $10,000. See, there you go. 
So teamwork, Doris, that's what you're saying is um, really important for keeping weight off? Well, uh, not just me, but this particular research shows that you have to have teamwork if you want something like this, in this case the weight, to stay off for these people. So it can't just be a one-time thing, you know, you get your $10,000 and that's it. You have to have other people that keep everybody motivated to keep the weight off. And you have That's to pay true. those people, too. Right, you got to pay them, too. But well, if they I were pay part, you, they, were part, they also had lost. In other words, everybody had been part of the, the experiment. All right, but, but here's it, the thing. If I paid somebody $10,000 to lose weight, like you, Christy, I give yeah. you $10,000, yeah. I swear I will be on your ass every week behind you in the, in the McDonald's, <laughs> in the <laughs> Walmart, <laughs> in Costco, go and keep that weight off. But not because of teamwork, because we have chemistry. Right. That and I just paid you ten thousand dollars. <laughs> or you're paying me ten thousand dollars, so you might not want to. That's true. Okay, okay Doris, here's my next question. I've got two minutes, so you got a minute to answer this. I'm going to playfully ask you. So Doris, well uh God, I can't read. So Doris, you have another, shall we say, interesting story about teamwork and makeup. <sighs> yes, I, I do, Sandra. <laughs> Anyway, okay, well, this is another teamwork thing, and it has to do with a study done by Procter & Gamble. And what this study involved was showing participants in the study pictures of a woman with makeup and without makeup. And the question that was posed is, uh, which woman looks more intelligent? Okay, the woman with the makeup, the majority of the people picked the one with the makeup as the one that was uh, that looked most uh, most intelligent, and then another set of pictures again, a woman with makeup and a woman uh, without. I mean, what did I say? A woman with makeup and a woman without makeup, and they asked which person looks more honest, more likable, and again, the majority of the people picked the one with the makeup. So, so. okay, the bo- okay, the bottom line was that looks you know, do have something to do with how people perceive, uh, you know, uh, the person. But well, that, you know what, Doris, that's why you, me, and Christy are on the radio, including Rick, because <laughs> looks don't matter. My name is Sandra Beck. I'm the host of Motherhood Yay. Talk Radio. Christy and Rick are busy crying in the other room. Doris will be crying <laughs> shortly. Uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to welcome uh, a team-building expert by the name of <laughs> Mark Williams, and uh, we're just not going to invite Christy back because she's just not having the feel and the love. <laughs> mom here's your show motherhood talk radio giving you interesting inspiring and influential information as you navigate everything from child care to corporate formation this is motherhood talk radio and we'll be right back after these Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Be here for Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Trisha will dig deep into topics that matter most to women, inspiring women to make a change in their own lives and to make a difference in the world, and maybe even deep within their own hearts. Trisha is a wife, mom, speaker, family expert, and author of 24 books. For more information on Trisha and Living Inspired, go to her website, trishagoyer.com. That's T-R-I-C-I-A-G-O-Y-E-R.com. Trisha's vision is to be the voice of hope and possibility for women of all ages. Her intention is to serve ordinary women by encouraging extraordinary things with God's help. Trisha expresses real life, real hope for real women. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Why do I feel so lousy? Why aren't my medications working? Why can't my doctor figure me out? These are just a few of the questions Dr. Kevin Connors will be exploring in Dr. Kevin Connors Live every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central on toginet.com. The author of the book, Help My Body is Killing Me, solving the connections of autoimmune disease to thyroid problems, fibromyalgia, depression, ADD, ADHD, and more. He'll dig into these and many other conditions to dissect the mechanisms of your problems. 
giving God the glory and looking for answers to make you look and feel better, to make you feel whole again. For more on him, his book, and the show, check out UpperRoomWellness.com. Never be satisfied with a diagnosis. There is always a reason behind it. And if you can alter the mechanisms that led you down your current path, we can change your future. It's Dr. Kevin Connors, live, Monday nights at 9, 10 Central, here on Toginet.com. Welcome back to Motherhood Talk Radio, the most powerful voice in women's issues. For more information, check out the website, motherhoodtalkradio.com. Now, let's get back to the show with your hosts, Sandra Beck and Christy Holly. Hey, mamas, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Christy Holly and Doris Rivas Brecky, and today is our team building and chemistry show. And for those of you that are just joining us uh, this week and haven't listened to the last two years of me talking about the same stuff over and over, um, I run a company called Motherhood Incorporated, and I have a rule in my organization, and I've actually fired women over this rule. Um, If you come into my office, which is located in my home, I have two offices in my home, and you have your makeup on, you're dressed up nice, and you look really good, guess what, sister? You're fired. And (laughs) Christy, you will back me up on this. Um, am I allowed to talk? Am I? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> kick me off. Kick you off the air. I am so sorry. You going to come invite back? me back? You are you are back in the circle. Okay. Yes, please. I'm sorry. I, actually, I remember <laughs> I was new to this little group that you guys had, and we were at the park, <laughs> and I heard you telling that story to some of the other moms, and I thought, hmm. I think we might be able to be friends, like oh, yeah. very good friends. So, so that was, <laughs> was one of the things that I, that's why I don't wear makeup or dress up. <laughs> I don't want to be fired. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. Well, you know, we want to thank Doris for her information because, you know, it is really cool when you think about, like, you know, we make the effort to dress up, we get better customer service, we get a date, we get, you know, lots of good things that happen when we dress up, but it's not happening here because we're on the radio and nobody cares how we look. That's right. And do you trust me because I don't wear makeup? I don't trust you on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> makeup, no makeup, clothes, you could be in a tutu riding a pig <laughs> across the road, and I would look at you and go, she's fascinating, but I don't trust you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, lesbian moment. Okay. Um, <laughs> what just happened? I was listening to Rick. That's what happened. This is the problem. You know, he should not be listening into the show. He needs to put his little earphones in and go into Swanson world. Swantastic. All right, Swantastic. All right, we have a guest today, and his name is Mark Williams, and he is somebody that I've known a long time. <laughs> so we can tease him unmercifully, but he also happens to be a team-building expert. Mark, are you there? Hey, Sandra Beck. How are you? <laughs> good, good. I promise I won't fire you from the show today. Uh, right on. I, who, who am I on with, you and Christy? We're all here. Yes. Oh, Hi, well, Mark. The, Hi, Christy. Doris, are you still with us? Hi, Mark. Hi, Doris. What a, what an honor to be on with such such talented individuals. <laughs> <laughs> talented sure. individuals with no makeup on. I love that. I have makeup on. I love oh, I love no makeup. Oh, see, I told you he was a good guy. Yeah, um, I think say. it's a myth that most guys like you know makeup, but. It has its place. If you're going to work for Team Back, you better you better not wear your makeup. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you oh. from? What you do? <laughs> it's an interview. I, am I the one who one's hot and one likes girls? I'm like, oh dear, which one am I? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or you weren't talking about me. That's the next guess. Yeah, we were. You're the only guest today, unless you get fired. <laughs> well, I, you know, you said Mark Williams, team building expert. I gotta, you know, I gotta stop you right there. The word, ex- <laughs> <laughs> the word expert. You know, I'm a, I would say team building passionist, passionista. You know, I, I, I don't want to say I'm an expert at anything because that, I want to keep learning. But I do love. There's something about putting a band together that really excites me like you know I always say putting a band together because I'm a big fan of music and I just get excited about 
finding the right people for the right spots. And because it's magical when you get the right crew together, they rise above anything anyone could do individually. And that's, you know, obvious. And you see it in Olympic sports and team sports and businesses and, you know, even families and mothers are some of the greatest team builders ever. But I, uh, just a little bit about me. I, uh, Grew up in Minnesota, came out to California, my late 20s, gave it a run at acting, figured I'd get out of Minnesota. I've always been a fan of sales, and and acting was just really me trying to sell another product, (laughs) So, um, which which eventually led into uh, real estate, which is all, all failed thespians, either go real estate or mortgage. (laughs) Or waiters. Or waiters, and uh, <laughs> but I've always was passionate about that, and I eventually started uh, recruiting real estate agents, and I worked with a great team. That's where I met you, and then a company called Keller Williams came to town, and I went out on my own and and got really involved in and in growing that company for them, and that was part of the regional development team. And here we so are Mark- now. That is so cool, Mark. I mean, I remember the day I met you. <laughs> you know I have to bring this up on the air. Oh, dear. Because you come in the office, you're, you know, we're in Beverly Hills, and I'm, you know, sitting in this conference room, and, and I just remember you sitting there going, yeah, you know, don't sell real estate, think I could. <laughs> <laughs> and then you said something about, like, not liking to wear shoes or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but it was really funny. And and I, I don't know about you, but I think, you know, it's like you either, Christy and I were talking in the opening segment, you either hit it off or you don't right away. Either hit it off or you don't. I think it was I didn't like wearing suits. Okay, yeah, maybe it was suits. <laughs> <laughs> and shoes. That's a real actor. Real actors, they like to walk around in their shoes and, you know, experience the earth. I'm more just scared of the suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, we, you know, we hit it off right away, and that's... Uh, you know, chemistry and team building, and there is that. There, you got to have that chemistry. I totally agree. Um, but sometimes it can be, you know, you can be fooled. You can have great chemistry. doesn't mean they're going to make a good fit on the team. That's true. I mean, it's like getting along with each other and getting team members to get along can be a real big challenge. What do you think the hardest thing is about building teamwork? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. You know, you were, and I probably learned a lot of this from you, but it was really uh, the hardest thing would be, let me think, would be, you know, patience and finding, you got these certain positions on a team, and, uh, well, number one, you got to know the positions, like what, I, I play hockey, so I think of ice hockey. I mean, you have to know what the role of each person is, but the hardest part is finding you know, the right people, you want to get the right people on the bus and the wrong people out of there as quickly as possible. And that's the hardest part, trying to trying to figure out who's going to sit in what seat and what people you got to get, you got to get out of there that might be affecting the team in a negative way. So well, a lot of leaders, people, what? sometimes those people, Mark, have great chemistry. You know, I think of one of the team members uh, that was on our top sales team who was so much fun, but he was a disaster. I mean, DUI, you know, coming to work stoned, you know, losing his, his, <laughs> his, lost his pants somewhere in an open house. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> That's the fun open house. You know, and the other one that went and sat in the wrong house, this is in Malibu, <laughs> i got to tell you. Like some of the stuff you would never believe, one of the guys on our team went out to Malibu in these $5 million homes, set up an open house <laughs> in the wrong house. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, it, you know, everybody has their unique, you know, their <laughs> unique talent, and you got to figure out, you know, you got to harness that talent and figure out, is it going to work on the team or is it going to bury us? Because, uh, you know, a superstar, a team of the, uh, you know, when the when the U.S. basketball first came around and the the Olympics that first year, they got. Um, the dream team's going, and 
I'm not sure which year they won it, but one year it was just it was all superstars from different teams. They didn't have any chemistry or any flow, and they actually lost to I think it was like Turkey or Greece or Italy, and they they were like, how could this team of superstars possibly lose? It was like Michael Jordan, Charles, Bar- and they lost. The dream team, yeah, the dream team, the and dream they, they lost. Or the or the Lakers when they lost. Uh, Colby. You know, they were a group. There's Ernest. a big difference between a group and a team. So the hard, did I answer your question? The hardest thing I think is is really just taking your time to find um, the right person. The biggest mistake I see people make is they they do you know not to not to piss you off, Sam, but they uh, <laughs> they they immediately say I like this person or I don't. And for me, if I like the person, I look at that as a sign. Well, okay, then it might not work. You know, you you have to think outside the box, like, just because I don't like them, are they right for the position? Because their strengths are going to be different than yours, and you might not want such an outgoing, uh, you know, wild DWI getting, going to the wrong house Malibu, you know, really exciting person for that role, and the right person could be sitting in front of you, so you got to know the positions really well. No, I think you're right, Mark. I think, you know, it's it, it, you know, for me, it's hard because if I don't have that initial chemistry with someone, in my personality, it's really hard to work with people I don't like. And I think I've been spoiled. I know I was spoiled, you know, when we worked together and the team that we had put together was so great. So, you know, anything that, that comes like second best to that is really difficult for me. Um, But in the building of our radio show team, you know, the chemistry has been so great between Christy and Rick and Doris and Robin and Carrie and Jill, just everybody. We're all different, but we manage to come together uh, for an end goal. And I think when you have superstars, um, you can't really do that. So I need to take us to commercial break. Uh, We're coming up on half on the hour. My name is Sandra Beck. I'm the host of Motherhood Talk Radio, along with Christy Holly, Doris uh, Brecky, Rick Swanson, and uh, who else? Did I miss anybody? Let's just thank Robin Boy for all of her marketing efforts. Yeah, she's so cute. (laughs) She is so cute. And she's tuning in today to listen to us. I invite you guys to check us out on iTunes. We're under military. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong show. Whoops. We are on Motherhood Talk Radio. Shameless plug. (laughs) Listen to my other show, Mondays, 2 o'clock Pacific time, uh, for Military Mom Talk Radio. But this show is Motherhood Talk Radio. And (laughs) check us out at motherhoodtalkradio.com. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk more with Mark Williams about team building and chemistry. show motherhood talk radio giving you interesting inspiring and influential information as you navigate everything from child care to corporate formation this is motherhood talk radio and we'll be right back after these holidays and celebrations get you down and leave you feeling frazzled then join sandy fowler and her guests on heart-filled holidays every monday at noon 11 a.m central on toginet.com Sandy will help you discover the secrets to having the celebrations you've always dreamed of while adding fun and meaning to your life. From Valentine's Day to Christmas to special family events, Sandy Fowler will show you how to put the fun and meaning back into those special days by taking a look at what we can do to turn the upcoming holidays into cherished memories and show us how to allow it to intertwine with everyday life. For more on the show, Sandy, and to receive Sandy's Holiday Happiness Booklet, go to HeartfilledHolidays.com. Then get set to discover the secrets to creating happy holidays and happy everydays by joining Sandy Fowler and her guests on Heartfilled Holidays every Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time on Toginet.com. Hey moms, get ready for Living the Dream Mom with Nina Fry. Thursday mornings at 10, 9 a.m. Central on Toginet.com. Living the Dream Mom is about the true realities of motherhood, the beauty and the rewards of watching your children grow. All these moms have something in common. They put their kids first. It's not about the kids all the time and the diapers and the bottles and the breastfeeding. It's about showcasing the mother in motherhood. Real moms in the real world. You get it? Now that's what the show is about. So every week, let's get together
together and we'll share these great stories with you guys. And I hope by the end of the show, you'll be saying, you know what? That is my life. Nina gets it. And I can't hardly wait to see what she brings me next week. Don't miss the next Living the Dream Mom. It's Real Moms in the Real World. Thursday mornings at 10, 9 a.m. Central. Living the Dream Mom with Nina Fry on toginet.com. Welcome back to Motherhood Talk Radio, the most powerful voice in women's issues. For more information, check out the website, motherhoodtalkradio.com. Now, let's get back to the show with your hosts, Sandra Beck and Christy Holly. Hey, mamas, this is Sandra Beck. I'm here with Doris Rivas Brecky and Christy Holly. Our guest today is Mark Williams, and he is a team building. Well, no, I can't say expert. Um, he's. I don't know. He's passionista. Passionista, right, to go out with Doris's makeup fashionista. Um, but Christy, you were saying something on the break. What? Enthusiast. Oh, oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, because yeah, when we're talking about lesbians and passionistas, it's just going down a way, you know, a, a road we don't want to go down today. That's crazy train. That's crazy train. Okay, bam, Christy, bam, you were saying, <laughs> you were saying something on the break today. I was trying to say something on the break today. What I was sort of saying is, <laughs> with you, um, like not liking someone or liking someone, um, since you work directly with with the people that you hire one-on-one like you have to like them right off the bat because whether no matter what their strengths are um you know if they're bitchy or witchy or whatever like you know you got you have to be able to work with them and and be happy mm-hmm. with them mm-hmm. yeah don't you don't you agree I agree. I do. Well, but I'm also very difficult that way because I really care for the people I work for. Right. And you want to work with people that you like. I mean, since you have that option. True. I mean, because if you worked for some other company that you're hiring and hiring. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> that we're hiring, you're hiring all these people. Hi, Rick. Yes, we're on oh. the air. If you could please put your guitar down. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Sorry, I'm we have technical no, I'm difficulties. <laughs> okay, chemistry breaking down, <laughs> breaking down right here on the air. This is what happens because Christy very rarely comes on the air and says something that she really <laughs> passionate about. And then Rick walks in playing guitar like a strolling bandolero. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> what the? Oh, he did. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right, chemistry, love, thank you for fixing my kid's yeah. guitar. Just shut the hell up and let's get back to the show. Okay, so I agree, Christy. I think, um, you know, dealing with those type of issues on a daily basis with somebody you don't like one-on-one can be very difficult. Mark, what do you think? Hot seat. Yeah, yeah hot seat. <laughs> I love the hot seat. You know, yeah, if the team is two people and you don't like that person, um, you might have a little problem there. Yeah, that's called a divorce. <laughs> well, you know, marriage, there, there's so many different teams. You really have to look at what uh, what kind of team is it. If it is a marriage, that's a whole different ball game. But if it's a work thing or a sports thing, um, you might not like – you might not like the person immediately, but we all have a friend that we couldn't stand initially, and the more we got to know him or her, now they're our best friend. I mean, do you have someone like that, Stan or Christy? Yeah, or? I'm looking at two of them right now. <laughs> I mean, literally, um, where you told other people that you could not stand this person, and it turned out they became one of your best allies, or and and that's sometimes true, I think that's because the, yeah, because go ahead. of respect. It's like respect outweighed my liking or not liking them. And I didn't not like them on a moral level. I just thought they were obnoxious. But then when I found out they were really good at what they did, kind of there was that grudging respect. And then once I got to say, you know, hey, I I don't like it when you insult me, when you insult (laughs) my friends, (laughs) please stop doing that, Um, we forged a better relationship. Um, But I think it came down to respect. I really respected what that girl did, had done, and could do. I'm thinking of a person that Sandra used to <laughs> hit very hard in her boxing class. <laughs> really, really hard. <laughs> oh, my uh, goodness. And now she's 
buddies with her. I'm just okay. Kidding. Okay. okay. <laughs> I will come clean. I'll come clean on the air. To be fair, there was a woman in my sphere of influence who didn't like the way I ran my Boy Scout troop. So then when I went to my Krav Maga class where I learned how to punch and kick and kill a man in three moves. Which really is, hard. She punches really, really hard. I do punch really and hard. And really hard. Just yeah. saying. Just saying. And this woman, I, I, I punched her really hard. <laughs> and I punched her really hard a lot. It wasn't just one or two times. And she's little. She is little. In fact, one time I punched her so hard, she, like, <laughs> she shot across the mat. And you know what? I wasn't sad. And now, and, and now, and now, she actually is a very, very lovely woman, and she said to me uh, that the night that she made fun of my Boy Scouts, which made me want to, like, rip her little head off, um, she was having a really bad day, and, you know, she didn't mean anything by it, and now our kids are friends, so I don't feel the need to punch her anymore. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bad so, team building. Not a great team building practice. No. <laughs> and Stan can hit. I've been there. I've been on the receiving end of a back wallop. Well, now it's a little more controlled and, and um, it has accurate. to be more accurate. accurate. Yes, it's definitely more accurate. Um, so, Doris, you have a question for Mark. Ooh, yeah. Right Yes, thank you. Mark, uh, I've just been thinking, I I have a lot of background in psychology. That's actually uh, my degree in clinical psych. Mm, And I was just wondering, (laughs) well, maybe. (laughs) But uh, anyway, I was just wondering, uh, in a a situation where you're, okay, you're in a corporate office and you have uh, a project that the boss just throws at, say, for instance, you Uh or, you know, somebody like Sandra who's in a leadership position, and you're trying to, they just say, okay, you got to get this done and you got to pick a certain amount of people. Uh So when you're analyzing who you want to pick, are there, like, tests, like uh, specific tests that you can give people that they, they don't necessarily know that you're testing them, but you know that you're giving them something to see if it's if it's something that they can work with that mm-hmm. will also bring them into the fold of the group. Is there is there like a, a, a direction manual for people who want to possibly <laughs> No. A direction manual, yes, it's called uh I don't know, Stan. There's a good one I could come up with right now, but you know, we uh well I work at Keller Williams, which is a giant real estate company. One I, know, of them. I, I'm, I know them, yeah. And uh, they're actually based in Texas. And we, you know, I've learned so many team building practices. And there's things like we're no longer secret about it. They have te- like flat out um, tests we administer. But it really, oh. you know, I got to rewind and say, what is it you're looking for? What's the goal you're trying to achieve? What's uh-huh. the not to sound too corporate, but you know, you can't just. Uh, I know. I'm people... like, hello, is Mark in there? What <laughs> happened to him? He just can't give those silent tests. I yeah. know. He just put on a suit and it's all over. Go ahead. Sorry. Put the suit on and the makeup, and you're good to go. Right. <laughs> um, you know, one thing that pops to mind is this disc test. I don't know if you've ever heard of the disc. D I S C. I think no. I'm an I. And it's uh, it's got four distinct personalities, and usually every great team has one. To, to have a great team, you got to have a little, like, certain people from each group to really complete the the team. And, like, Keller right. Williams, the the head of the co- – the guy who started at Gary Keller was a real driver, a real abrupt – I mean, you guys all know, like, someone who's – a D would be a characteristic, like a Donald Trump. You know, they can be a real – Right, right. And that's good for, like, getting the ball rolling. But what happened to Keller Williams is he – took the company from, like, you know, two offices to 30 or 40, and he hit this wall because everybody hated him. <laughs> he became, and you still work for him. <laughs> well, no, he, t- he became kind of a, you know, um, just people didn't like him because he was, those drivers, they usually, if you don't know them, they, they can be abrupt and dismissive and cold. So what he did, he was smart enough of a leader to say, you know what, I need to get the other three pieces and have somebody else take over and be the front man. So he went out and got 
um, a lady named Mo Anderson who was a lot softer and more nurturing than him and, you know, very caring, kind of like, you know, like Mother Teresa is an S. That's an S, like a stable... So, so S he was, is for steadiness. Let me let me clarify for our listeners today. D disc is D I S C, and this is a personality assessment that's typical uh, with the Myers Brick type indicator. So D is for dominance, and that's the control freak. I is for influence. That's like the social butterfly communications expert. Steadiness is the patient person, and then compliance is the person who kind of organizes everything. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, it's called Google. <laughs> that's like Wikipedia. Yeah. I know. I'm so smart. It's I'm just great. Though, that's, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Oh, you're a D. That's yeah, great. I'm the show. I'm a D. Sam so, Mark, a D. what are you? I'm a uh, a DI. A DI. Ooh, you got two of them. I know. You're controlling and you're influential. <laughs> nice. Well, <laughs> I. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I just couldn't well, resist. What's so great about the Gary Keller story is he, a true <laughs> leader, says, you know what? I know myself, and i got to get help and get other people. So when he got this Mo Anderson lady who was an ass, like you said, Sam, more steady, patient, uh, the company went from 30 or 40 offices to 600. Wow. Because now he had... The driving, his driving ability, like his dominant, you know, his aggressive get out there, discover, you know, like an explorer, Columbus. But then she was able to keep the people around with her soft side. So it was a magical. They had chemistry. They had. They were both uh, had different strengths. So when that happens, it's it's magical. I mean, you have you know you have Led Zeppelin. The band. <laughs> the band. The band. <laughs> or Rolling Stones. The live one, or... not the dead one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's magical when when all that happens. It's, it it's hard. It is magical. It is magical. I'm going to take us to commercial break now. Um, the topic of today's show is team building and chemistry. And for those who have missed uh, the earlier shows or have missed our earlier episodes, I encourage you guys to go to iTunes because we're getting picked up in iTunes in different countries, Christy. So we're pretty soon going to be, you know, like, I don't know, in front of all these German people. <laughs> Which German, super fun. high D's. High D's yeah. in Germany. It is. And um, I also want you guys to tune in and tell your military friends to listen to Military Mom Talk Radio, which airs Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific time. My name is Sandra Beck. I am the host of Motherhood Talk Radio along with Military Mom Talk Radio. And we're going to come back from the break. Uh, We've got 15 minutes more to poke Mark with some more team building and chemistry questions. We're going to talk about what makes a great leader and how do you get the best out of each player. Mom, here's your show, Motherhood Talk Radio, giving you interesting, inspiring, and influential information as you navigate everything from child care to corporate formation. This is Motherhood Talk Radio, and we'll be right back after these. Why do I feel so lousy? Why aren't my medications working? Why can't my doctor figure me out? These are just a few of the questions Dr. Kevin Connors will be exploring in Dr. Kevin Connors Live every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. The author of the book, Help My Body is Killing Me, Solving the Connections of Autoimmune Disease to Thyroid Problems, Fibromyalgia, Depression, ADD, ADHD, and more. He'll dig into these and many other conditions to dissect the mechanisms of your problems. Giving God the glory and looking for answers to make you look and feel better. To make you feel whole again. For more on him, his book, and the show, check out UpperRoomWellness.com. Never be satisfied with a diagnosis. There is always a reason behind it. And if you can alter the mechanisms that led you down your current path, we can change your future. It's Dr. Kevin Connors, live, Monday nights at 9, 10 Central, here on Togginet.com. Welcome back to Motherhood Talk Radio, the most powerful voice in women's issues. For more information, check out the website, MotherhoodTalkRadio.com. Now, 
Let's get back to the show with your hosts, Sandra Beck and Christy Holland. My name is Sandra Beck, and I am the host of Motherhood Talk Radio, along with Christy Holly, Rick Swanson, Doris Rivas Brecky, and about 50 other million people who are putting this show together. And I'm just not going to name them all because I'm feeling, what is it, dominant, influence, steadiness, and compliance. We were talking about the DISC method when we went to break, uh, which is a personality typing that has to do with team building. Our guest today is Mark Williams, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about, first I want to talk about what makes a great leader. And I'm going to ask you, Christy, and I'm going to ask Doris, in your mind, what makes a great leader. But first I'm going to go to our guest, Mark. Oh, good. Oh, I'd love to Give hear what they time. say. It's uh, no, I'm going to copy you. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's you know, there's so many uh, great leaders out there, and we keep talking about this disc profile. And there's there's no it, a leader doesn't have to be a D or an I or an S or a C. There's leaders. There's great leaders in every section. So there's no there's no right. You know, so many people in, in real estate they're like, well, do I have to be do I have to be a D to to be a great leader, or, and no, the answer is no. Some of the greatest leaders were S's, and of course, uh, you know, like I, Bill Clinton was an I, uh, Mother Teresa was an S. But anyway, I, I think a great, the greatest, let's see, the greatest uh, characteristic that makes a great leader, I would have to say, well, first thing that pops pops to my head is passion passion and for his yeah, we team. Yeah, we got passionista going. We got a lot of passion on the radio show yeah, today. They're, they're, I, they're, <laughs> they, you know, they will, they will fight and defend their team till the end, and they'll, they'll be the last one standing. They'll be the first one up, and, and they just they have this passion for this, for this team. And then the other thing that always pops into my mind, I see great, great leaders are, it's very simple, but they're great listeners. And they, and they really seek to find out what it is, you know, that's important to these other people. And it's just, it's, I see it all the time, passion, great listening, and they're just, they have this quiet confidence about them. And people want to follow them because they're stronger and people believe they can kind of get them to where they want to go. So people just naturally follow, much like I followed you, Sam. Oh, right over the cliff. <laughs> like, oh no. I didn't, you know, I didn't know who who this guru agent was that we were going to go work with. And when I met you, you had a vision and you knew what you wanted. And I didn't have a clue, but I said, well, I believe she knows where she's going. And we had chemistry, and we wanted to work together. So it just it worked. But I saw something in you that I didn't see in myself, and that's what leaders have yep wow, wow. i know i'm oh. like oh the host is like gonna sit over wow. here and, clean it. and then she punched me i know i couldn't leave myself out of a paper bag right now but thank you for that that was awesome um i'm gonna go over to you christy and ask you what makes a great leader and you can't just say what he said i know everything that mark just got done saying <laughs> I agree with. I think also a great leader is someone that can, who makes good decisions, you know, Mm -hmm. quickly, and who Mm -hmm. takes the initiative to, you know, take the first step. And like you said, a good listener to someone that will um, meet other people's needs and bring people together. That's what I think. I think that's great. Doris, what about you, hon? Well, um, I actually was making a list when you said that we were going to be asked, and I was so happy when Mark was talking about his uh, characteristics of what he thought a leader uh, had. And on the top of my list, I had listener. Wow. Yeah. So I, I, I feel really good about that because that, that's important to me, and I have been in many uh, leadership-type positions where I worked under great leaders and actually supposedly people thought I was a leader. And I found I'm older than all of you guys, and that's one thing that I've come to the conclusion that a person who really listens is so 
somebody that people trust coming to. Mm-hmm. And, oh, wow. and that's, and that's, that's important for a leader, the caring and trust. And you get that when you listen, when you listen to your people. Yeah, it's, it's so true. I, early on, well, not too early on, but I was a, at one point I had the opportunity to manage my first Keller Williams and, um, I was young and new and not really, uh, didn't have a clue on leadership, but I was dropped into this leadership role, and I just thought my job was to grow the company, grow the company, grow the company. And um, shortly after, I found there was agents and people were leaving the company because I was so not – I didn't pay any attention to my team. Right. So I didn't listen. I was I, – you know, I thought, well, all i got to do is grow it and grow it and grow it, but team building – you got to keep you got to keep the people on the band happy too. Right. Otherwise, you got to listen. And that's what my biggest learning experience was that I had to stop listening to the people on the team is more important than trying to trying to grow the team. Yep. Yep. Well, and I think, you know, leadership takes different forms and, you know, you have to be like, for me, I'm going to, I'm going to buzz in and, and be like, okay, I'm, I know I'm not the best listener. I <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Do three things at once, cut people off, finish their sentences for them. Um, but one of the things that I've learned through my career is that uh, to me, like what makes a great leader is, is flexibility because there are times like I think of some of the charity mm-hmm. events that I chair now um, where I'm like, I don't care if it's raining. I don't care if you're hungry. You know, get those sneakers in the van because there's 200 kids coming in the morning that need shoes on, and I don't care that – I don't care what's going on with you. Just get it done. And there it is. Well, but you right. Absolutely. There's sometimes when you have to like put the gun to your head and say, "I will either you know their do, head, not your head, not to, <laughs> not to my head," <laughs> and say, "Listen, you take a swing at me. It'll be the last thing you ever do." And you you make that dividing line. And then there's other times when you know you don't want to do that in preschool or you know. But there are other times when you have to take like that steadfast, resolute reproach, which is patience and understanding and show some compassion, whether you feel it or not. Um, And then there's times when you need to be influential, which like when I need to go out and get new business for my company, I'm not going to go in as much as I want to tell the client, just give me your credit card, sign on the dotted line and leave me alone. That's what I want to do. I have to be more influential and social and talk to them and go to dinner and pretend I like the dessert. Um, And then I have to come home every day in respect to, like, kind of structure and organization, I'm a single mom with two kids. There are bills to be paid. There's stuff to be done around the house. My kids need to be at places A, B, and C. And I, to me, I think truly great leadership is somebody who has the flexibility to rotate between dominance, influence, uh, steadiness and compliance, the three or the four characteristics um, of the mm-hmm. DISC model, uh, because in any one situation, Mark, you were talking about the you know the guru over at Keller Williams that could only be in the dominant mode. Well, if you're a steadiness person or a submission person and you never stand up to be dominant as a leader, it could be harder to get the job done. So I'm yeah. going to buzz in and say I think great leaders, truly great leaders, can rotate between those four. Good call. Good I like call. it. You know, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I even finished it in under 15 minutes. Sandra back with a shot to the upright score. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. That's right. Put it right through the right the the up top wow. where Mama hides the cookies. <laughs> the hockey analogy. That is. I think moms are. I think moms. Let's face it. Moms are great leaders. I mean, they have to juggle. You know. Everything you said there, listeners, they have to listen to their children. They're flexible. They, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, they have to be strong for their kids. Yep, I think, yep. you know, and this is a mother a motherhood show, and I just want to point out, I think moms, you know, dads are too, but it's like, in the end, who really runs the family? The, who's really the CEO of the team? I always joke, I call my sister. She's got two kids and her brother-in-law, and I call her the CEO. Because she, she reigns the pain, she runs, you know, she just, and in the end, yes, she's, she the one they, <laughs> she's the one they cry to and the one that, so 
Moms are awesome. Awesome oh, leaders. Huh? Wow. See, that was like you know, like so influential. That was such the I part of you coming out. Because if you came on the dominant thing and talked about the dads, we'd be like, okay, we've just let you off the air. <laughs> Most dads are D's. Most dads are they're just, you know, macho, no directions. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask anybody for help. I know where we're going. Ready, fire, aim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I mean I think there's something to be said about the way we you know, like kind of the nature versus nurture and um but but you know, I will say at the end of the day that that one of the demarcation lines between somebody who has leadership capabilities and somebody who doesn't is the ability to pull the trigger. I mean, we make a joke about ready, aim, you know, fire, or ready, fire, or aim, aim, or whatever it was. Um, yeah. But pulling the trigger is something that every leader has to do. And, you know, when I used to teach leadership down for the Marine Corps, I used to say, look, guys, you know, you got to make a decision and you've got to make it quickly, not because we want to go willy-nilly in this stuff, but we want to give ourselves that kind of comfort zone to regroup, to move in a different direction, or to fix the mistake we made. Because if you wait to the last minute, and I see this with moms all the time in their decision-making, you know, they're home, they're doing laundry, their decision-making skills on a, on a general basis weaken over time. You know, mm-hmm. they can make decisions, small decisions, but on really tough calls, it's hard for them. Mm-hmm. And my advice to the listeners today with a mom is to, you know, not hem and haw, don't take days to make a decision, make your decision stand by it, do the best decision you can have, make the best decision with the information you have at the time, know that new information will come in, pull the trigger, and then if you need to go back and regroup, fix it, you know, advance in another direction, you still have time to do that. 100% agree with you. Uh, uh, I, you know, a bad decision is better than no decision because at least you can learn, make adjustments, Take it, you know, but at least you've you've started the fire. You got an right, action is right. always a good thing. Yeah. Well, and you don't know if it's a bad decision a lot of times till you make it because there's just too many variables. And um, yep. you know, the moms I see in my sphere of influence are so afraid to make a mistake, and um, we make tons of mistakes on the air all the time. Christy, you and I laugh about it. We say <laughs> dumb things. We blow intros. We blow outros. We're still on the air, you know, a couple years later. Uh, my name is Sandra Beck. I'm the host of Motherhood Talk Radio along with Christy Holly and Doris Rivas Brecky. I want to thank Rick Swanson and Robin Boyd today for all their support along with Carrie, Jill, John, and Sabrina over at TogiNet. Um, we are... With Mark Williams today, who is a longtime friend of mine, a super great guy. He's also, I'm going to go on record saying an expert in team building because what uh. makes an expert? <laughs> Somebody has to say it in the public arena. We just said it in the public arena. Uh, next week uh, on our show, we're going to have Cinderella, 11 p.m. We're going to have Janine from Technology. We're going to be giving away some gift cards on our Military Mom Talk radio show, $1,000 a month. So tune in and win. Thank you for being a part of Motherhood Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Christy Holly. Go on Join us every Tuesday as we give